All right, so now we're looking at factoring the difference of two perfect squares, and let's just go back and see what this would look like if we had x plus a times x minus a. Um, so uh, let's just see how this multiplies back out for us. We get x squared, we get minus ax plus ax minus a squared. And we see this would leave us with x squared plus 0x, we see with that, minus a squared, and obviously we don't usually write 0x, but we could just notice that. And we see that we end up with x squared minus a squared. So, what we can see from this, if we have the difference of two perfect squares, here being the first perfect square, here being the second perfect square, and the difference, subtraction between them, then these always just factor into this nice easy formula right there for us. So let's go ahead and, and see what we have. And I always say we've got to hear bells when we see this. So whenever we see two perfect squares, the difference, let's take a look over there. Oh, I'm hearing bells when I see this. And I, I always kind of just break them down like this. The first one is x squared. The next one is minus 4 squared. So now I see what I have. Now here is my first part, first part of the term. Here is my second part of the term. So it simply becomes x plus 4 times x minus 4. And that's how I do this one. Let's look at the next one. So this one, we can see that we've got 9x squared minus 16. And again, I'm hearing bells. When I see 9, that's a perfect square. x squared, boom, 16 is also a perfect square. So again, what I do is I say, what squared gives me 9x squared? And that would be 3x. Because 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared. Minus, and the square root of 16, we can really think of it as 4 again. So I always do this. You don't have to do this. It's just something I think that will help us out when we get to cubics as well. And then again, we just follow the form. 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. And it doesn't matter whether I do the plus 4 or the minus 4 first. Um, that's our commutative property there. So we're good to go. Moving to the next one. Now notice in this one we've got two variables, but again, it doesn't make a difference. Let's break it down into what squared gives us x squared. All right, there we go. Let's look at the next one. What squared gives me 4y squared? All right, well, well, that would just be 2y. There we go. So now we just follow the same pattern. x minus 2y times x plus 2y. And we are good to go. Uh, let's just multiply this out just so we can see. So we get x squared plus 2xy minus 2xy minus 4y squared. And we get x squared those cancel, minus 4y squared, and we're good to go. Last one, let's look at this one. Ooh, this 8 is not a perfect square. There's actually a cube there, and neither is 72, but there's an x there. So, oh, I'm, I'm thinking this, and just like we're always thinking, I always look for that GCF first. So, okay, so 8 and 72, we can pull an 8. We can also pull out an x. That's the least amount that they have together, and that's going to be with x squared minus 9. All right, let's break them into their houses. Squared minus 3 squared. And now we just see that it goes like this. 8x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And we are good to go. And there's the difference of two perfect squares.